Can you hear me clearer with the mic or clearer without the mic? Okay. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, tonight we're here to celebrate two things. One is the community health center movement in general. Um, and two is to invite you on a tour and do a ribbon cutting for the remodel that we did on the second floor of Sierra. So first, a few words about the community health center movement. Um, during the civil rights movement, the community health center movement was born in 1965. Uh, there were a group of activists who saw a need uh, for medical services in underserved communities. And they lobbied um, our legislature and uh, got some initial grant funding to provide health care for uh, underserved communities and, and our, our rural communities throughout the United States. Tonight, uh, today, health centers can be found from uh, Hawaii to Puerto Rico and every other state, Puerto Rico. I got a reaction there. Did you see that? <laughs> and and um, you know, just about every other state in the country. Um, uh, in 2022, um, health centers uh, set a record in the number of patients they saw. And in, in 2022, we saw a total of 3.1 million patients, um, which, which is more patients um, than any other year to date. We continue to grow and now serve, you know, patients well beyond the underserved. You know, we serve entire communities. We serve entire cities in some cases. Um, and we work really collaboratively uh, with other agencies and have grown from just healthcare in general and dental care, but to other services that support the community. Um, through diabetes education programs, um, through home visits, transportation, and a variety of other needs. So we're really proud to be part of the health center movement to help drive it forward. Um, a, an example of how we've impacted the community over the years. You know, we started an OBGYN program um, here in the, in the 80s, and that at that time, the infant mortality rate was 12.8 deaths per thousand. And today, that's down to 5.1 per thousand, which is less than the state and the national average. Um, and without the services that Mariposa provides to Santa Cruz County, um, that number were, would not be where it's at today. Uh, so. So without the community health movement, that also would not be possible. Uh, so, so now I'd like to turn it over uh, probably next to Dr. P to say a little bit uh, more about the building that we're in today, and then um, turn it over to, to Jim, the founding CEO of Mariposa um, and, and the person who led the charge uh, on the building that we're in today. Dr. Pete. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. Well, great job summarizing what health centers do. It's, uh, it's an honor to, to be here uh, serving uh, Santa Cruz County. And, and P and Jim were thinking about the Sierra building. This is the name of this building when it was actually built. We're actually trying to figure that out. 02 or 03, uh, but some in the early 2000s, that's fair to say. And uh, at that time, uh, the, the building was intended for various purposes. And some of you may remember that, others don't. Uh, certainly pediatrics always been in the second floor. Uh, some of you may remember our first, uh, second pharmacy site was here. First site was on State Street, if I remember that correctly. And then uh, certainly dental has always been here. And then the second floor, uh, 
uh, we provide OBGYN services and community health services. So, platicamos salud at the time. Uh, you know, the building is fairly large. So, over the years, we look for good ways and efficient ways to 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 utilize uh, properly. Uh, things have changed, and certainly the the renovation of the building has allowed us to uh, expand services. Pediatrics is a very, very busy service for us. We were very congested in the first floor, and we elected to add space for pediatrics in the second floor. And certainly we're gonna give you a tour of that uh, very, very shortly. Uh, behavior health is something we've done for a long time, mostly what we call the, the integrated model part of a medical diagnosis, we manage conditions that that many of us face in our life, that could be anxiety, depression. As of last year, we expanded that services to, in, to include what we call specialty behavioral health, which is essentially psychiatry and counseling. And, and part of that space is, is located in the second, uh, the second building. Uh, dental uh, remains here. So with the renovation, we'll be able to better serve our patients, both in BH and, and pediatrics. Uh, it's just a, a good feeling. The, the second floor is beautiful. I see thanks to a lot of people, including Tia, her staff, and, and many others who put in their time and effort to make, to make it good. Uh, we are certainly in the business of providing health care, uh, regardless of anything, regardless of ability to pay, regardless of race, regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, and income, and things like that. So this will allow us to, to provide our patients in, in a much, much uh, uh, better way. So thank you for allowing me to expand on that history. I'm gonna allow that Jim to tell us a little bit more about uh, the past, uh, certainly. Uh, and then I think Dan will, will, will end. So, uh, and, 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 and you have like two minutes. So just kidding. <laughs> Come on in. I'm all mic'd up. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here and to say a few words. Um, yeah, I hadn't. I haven't been here in a long time, so I didn't. I didn't even know this lower level was uh, was renovated. So this is a beautiful, beautiful facility. Um, yeah, um, community health centers, as Dan was saying, started as a response to a need throughout the country of uh, really millions of people that didn't have access to health care. And, uh, and that's why we started the health center in Santa Cruz County, in Nogales, because there was a huge portion of the, of the county that didn't have access to care. And when you provide access to care, great things happen, like the infant mortality rate you know, drop dramatically just with access to care. And so there's a reason community is in the, in the, in the name because it's about looking at the community and responding to community need. It's not about meeting our needs as staff. It's not about, you know, making things easy for us. It's about responding to those in the community that don't have uh, other resources and other sources of care. And we broadened that because we had an opportunity in Santa Cruz County to serve the wealthiest to the very poorest. And that is a privilege. Um, the, the dignity of our patients uh, has always been a driving force in how we serve our patients with professionalism and compassion and empathy. And, uh, and that has kind of propelled the health center's growth over the years. It's also about taking risk it's about uh, having a board of directors that's willing to support that risk. Um, you know, we just provided well baby care and WIC when we started. And, and um, throughout the nation, not just here, but throughout the nation, there was a fair amount of resistance to a new model of care. And, um, and uh, we were able to, you know, to meet the need in the community and expand over and over again. Um, the first, I was going to say, the first stretch that we did as a health center was we bought a trailer. <laughs> when we, 
when we were on La Castellana, we didn't have any room, so we were able to buy a trailer to provide health care. And then this building came along in 98, I think. No, not this one. Oh, that one over there. Oh. The original building, the Mariposa building. What was it? 85. No, no. We separated from the county in 85. 89? I had my, I'm dyslexic. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm dyslexic, so there you have it. Um, but that's how, that's the reason we ended up with pharmacy. I mean, you know, that was a big risk to, to do a pharmacy. Dental, behavioral health. I mean, all those expansions were based on community need. So I'll make it short. But, <laughs> but um, um, driving all that was really creating a, a culture here of caring for people. You know, and that's what that's why people get up in the morning every day to make a difference in people's lives. And so that's what it's always been about. So, um, yeah, it's 2002. Tia says 2003. And I always say trust in Tia. So I'm going to say 2003. So that makes it our 20th anniversary. Right. So um, anyway, I'm excited to see what's what's become of the of the of the second floor. And um, again, Thanks to the leadership all these years, the leadership staff from from everybody, from Ricky and his team to Dr. Theta and his team to Dan and their team, and specifically the board of directors willing to support risk. We are, and you guys are a magnificent uh, uh, resource to the community, uh, and uh, just not to be uh, underestimated what this health center can do. So anyway. I'm proud to be here. Uh, very proud of Mariposa. So thanks for having me. So just a few closing thoughts and thank yous. Um, one is specifically to our board of directors who supported us through um, our, our massive growth from uh, a house and a trailer to a main campus with multiple sites across <clears throat> across the county. Um, like to say thank you from the community members that are here, um, and I'd, I'd like to thank Senator Galvaldon for coming. Um, I really wanted to give a, a shout out to to Tia, like Dr. P mentioned. You know, our administrative staff who works behind the scenes to make what you're going to see upstairs a reality, um, not something that she can do on her own. But but I want to I want to pause and just give a round of applause for all of our staff here at Mariposa. <laughs> Jim made a really good point when he talked about the culture here at Mariposa. Um, and I'm an outsider who moved across the country, taking a chance on a new opportunity, and found a wonderful family and a wonderful community. Um, so I'm, I'm full of gratitude um, to have had this opportunity to work with the team of people that I do. Um, and, and I'm very grateful for the community that uh, we serve because one does not exist without the other. Um, so thank you everybody for being here tonight. Really appreciate it. And with that, I'd like to invite Tony, our board president, and Jim up to uh, cut the ribbon and officially kick off um, <laughs> gathering food or coming for a tour. Um, those who um, want want a tour, we could do separate groups. There's an elevator right there where um, uh, you can probably see right next to the door. And there are stairs just behind where the ribbon is about to be cut. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. You even got a drum roll.
You did. That was nice improv, gentlemen. I like it. I like it. Tony, thank you. Yeah. All right. Cool. Oh. And even you should even mention that even bigger.
Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Uh, Dr. P, ¿cómo estamos? Muy bien, muchas gracias por, uh, por estar aquí hoy. Okay. I'm here, Joe Wright, el gringo más mexicano, with um, We Love Nogales, and Dr. Pareda, the C Chief Medical Officer for Mariposa Community Health Center. Great, right, thank you for being here. This is a, a very good day for us. And thank you for the opportunity to allow us to show you the renovated space. Of course, that's what we're going to do. We're about to go on a tour of the of the upstairs, new upstairs, remodeled upstairs of the Sierra building. Yeah, of course. Yes. And this is called the Sierra building, uh, built in the early 2000s, had a number of services over the years, pediatrics, pharmacy, uh, dental, OBGYN, and community health. Um, now with the renovation, we change, and we're happy to show you that. So I was actually CPI certified upstairs oh, here, okay. way back in like 2006. Oh, okay. So I've been up here once, and this is very different from what yeah. it was. Excellent, excellent. So we renovated the entire space, the flooring, some some of the divisions, the conference room. Hemos remodelado todo el piso, el salón de conferencia está dividido en dos. Esta parte es pediatría. Estaban muy congestionados abajo. Sí. Eh, estar seguro que le damos a los pacientes el espacio. Y esta parte reservado para uh, consejerías y este tipo de servicios. Ok. El mental health entonces. Oh, yeah. Ok. Muy bien. Thank you. Ok. okay. This, is, this is the lobby. Where people can sit and, uh, and wait. Until y si aguanta el peso. No se preocupen. It's, it's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. <laughs> uh, we renovated the bathroom. There really modern and beautiful. Oh wow, this yeah. is my favorite part. Yeah, Always. Tenemos una sección para para los niños cuando quieren esperando el lugar, the place. You know, the building has always been attractive. We when we first built it, we we installed windows to look up our northern part of the country, which is very beautiful. Absolutely. Uh, it is a beautiful view, incredible view. Beautiful view. Yeah. Thank you. Guys. So we're going to start, um, let's start in pediatrics, that's okay. Okay, with you. perfect, yeah. So it says, vamos that's a, where we all start. Yeah, <laughs> vamos a empezar el lado de pediatría. Pues, tenemos mucha responsabilidad con nuestros niños. Of course. Y queremos estar seguros que el espacio es adecuado. Muy bien. So, uh, our rooms are are pretty spacious. Um, you can see that, you know, they have a table. The room is pretty nice. It has a sink and we have cabin, of course, for the supplies. And certain we have a curtain. So of course. A little privacy and for a certain situation. So Absolutely. all the rooms are very similar. Um, los cuartos son similares. Tienen una una cama de examen, tienen un sofá para eh, los familiares, tenemos un lavamanos, uh, una mesa y, y, y gabinete para uh, poner las cosas que necesitan. Everything that a doctor or nurse might need to grab at right. the when, right. When, right. Okay. Right. And then we have, this is sort of the, the uh, check-in and check-out area where a patients come in, they check in, and then on the way out they may uh, you know, an appointment for a follow-up visit. Of like course. That. Yeah. The rooms are very similar. Uh, these are uh, doors that are slightly different than the Oh, right. privacy doors. Sort of wow. Privacy door. Very similar. Very cool. Uh, the rooms toward there and, and towards the end are very, very similar. Um, this is an area we, we do labs. We keep samples. Um, this is where the needles are. This is where the needles are. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Aquí viven los vampiros, huh? Yes. And, and these are, um, uh, you know, a space for a lab space. We have a refrigerator. Of course. And then we have ability to send samples uh, to, to the first floor. Okay. The, the space is very similar here. So how many rooms altogether are there? Are many exam rooms? I'm sorry. I think we have about two, three, four, five. About eight. Eight, um, okay. Eight Absolutely. That's good to keep you know, yeah. patients circulating yeah. Yeah. and Most keep things moving. Great. Luego aquí tenemos, uh, tenemos un cuarto. 
está disponible eh, para tratar ciertas condiciones uh, que la podemos manejar en la clínica. Okay. Eh, niños que tienen asma, le podemos dar su tratamiento con el nebulizador okay. sí, sí, sí. aquí. Eh, en ocasiones um, hay situaciones que, que causan deshidratación, le podemos dar suero aquí, intravenoso. Okay. Pero tratamos de hacerlo lo más que podamos aquí en lugar de tener que enviarlo a todos. That's this, incredible. This is a room that we use to treat conditions like asthma with a nebulizer, dehydration, uh, dehydration IV fluids, and we want to observe them. It's a very, very important room for us. We want to, if we can, keep people out of the hospital for situations that, yes, they need more intensive treatment, of course. but they're not sick enough to be admitted. Of course, so yeah. That's what we do this room. Avoid the ER trip, yep. avoid yep. the, oh, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so how many pediatricians does Mariposa Community Health Center have? At the moment, we have seven. Seven, and okay. And we continue to recruit more. Oh, wow. I okay. think the need is there. Uh -huh. um, like the rest of the country, it's a challenge to recruit providers of health care, of course. Of course. Yeah. You know, we say we have a good place to work. We have a beautiful community, and and we you know we attract really good doctors. Of course. And but, so it was a challenge. Yeah. But COVID brought significant issues. Of course. So workforce, but we're gonna get there. And we're we're it's it's Mariposa Community Health Center. We're seeing it grow. We're seeing yeah. it evolve. Yeah. And it's it's an incredible thing to watch, yeah. especially as somebody who's been a patient from birth yeah. from with Mariposa. Yeah. So yeah. to see all this growth is, is it's amazing. Thank you. Uh, and, and you know, the doctors get here, they see how, how beautiful it is, how friendly our patients are, um, you know, how good of a place this is to work. This is our, not just our place to work, but this is our family. We spend a lot of hours here. So, um, but we continue to bring doctors, and that's our duty. Absolutely. Provide care. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, nope, no words, no words. And now we're moving on to the other half of the. Yeah, we're going to go to the other half. Uh, so this uh, factory has a couple of bathrooms, and then we have a staff lounge for. Para el chisme. Para, para el chisme. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and here we go. Here comes, this is the popular side. Yeah, so this is the <laughs> popular side. Great. All right, we walked in at the right moment, it seems. So we'll go back just a little way. I mean, if we're lucky, we'll hopefully we'll get a, a chance to, to talk to Senator Gabaldon. It'll be a great opportunity. But let's continue the tour for now. So we have a number of rooms where we do meetings. We do the group therapy. This is for okay. It's a beautiful room. Yeah. Yeah, four or four. Um, long, long, long. Some of these rooms are office space. Others uh, are or will be council rooms. Okay. For patients, um, office, office, uh, and then we have a room for meetings, and in the future will be a room for group intervention, group therapy. Back here. This is an incredible space. Yeah. So this would be like, like you say, room for meetings, for group therapy, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Some of those group therapies happen during the day. Some happen at night. Of course. Uh, we're still in the early use of, of this space. Of course. Yeah. Uh, as we hire uh, and bring more people to help us with, with counseling and things like that. Well, so I, I did want to talk for a moment about the the growth that you guys have done in recent years with your mental health department. It's 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 exploded, and I, there's been a need, and I feel like you guys have worked very hard to meet that need. Yeah. Uh, so for years, we've had what we call the integrated model. Uh, we had um, counselors on site to help us manage conditions that were linked to a clinical diagnosis, the classic medical model. Uh, individuals who had uh, conditions like hypertension, diabetes, um, you know, heart disease, cancer, and 
they felt anxiety, depression. We were able to manage that in house, usually with short term intervention, short visits. Uh, and then, you know, last year we saw the opportunity to grow and expand to what we call specialty behavioral health. We've contracted with a company to help us do that. So we now provide telepsychiatry services. Yeah. In, in this country, there's just not enough psychiatrists to yeah. provide psychiatric services, but using telehealth, yeah. those individuals can, can be used at a distance. So we do have a part-time psychiatrist who works for Mariposa. We contact with another company that help us do the telehealth as well. We've added uh, two more counselors, and then in the next few months, we're going to have an in-person psychiatrist okay. who can um, see patients in person rather than telehealth. And I, can, and I can see that we'll have more and more counselors um, to manage the needs. You know, the number of counselors we have is just not enough. But again, it's, it's you know, how do we attract, um, you know, qualified individuals to help us of course in the smallest county well tell me so so you, we mentioned COVID earlier and i i do feel that um when it comes to mental health there was COVID highlighted a need within the country if not um, exaggerated you know i mean well not exaggerated yeah. but yeah. um basically put fuel on the fire yeah um but telehealth also also kind of came out of the COVID era which right. has been a, a miracle i think for in a lot of places i've been you know i'm sure you guys have seen the benefits yes um so before COVID, we did very limited telehealth uh with COVID, we had to change very quickly i think many practices in the country moved to telehealth uh very quickly uh, most of the visits we went from a very small number of visits to over 90 percent telehealth literally within a week um and i think over time as, as the epidemic um has ended uh, although we still cases of COVID, of course, um, we are moving more of in-person visits, but we still see a need for telehealth. Uh, psychiatry, for sure, of course, is telehealth, but we still have patients who like that modality. They yeah. they may be at work, they need to speak, uh, see the doctor. They can do it from their work instead of coming in, wait, see the doctor. They can do it via a telehealth visit. You know, I, I don't know what will happen in the future. Uh, I think likely the number of visits via telehealth will probably settle, maybe somewhere between 10, 20%, okay. maybe in the low teens, but it's still an attractive option to, of course. for a lot of people. Particularly you know, in rural areas. I yeah, I mean, we, we do have uh, patients who travel and they have an appointment and they don't want to miss that appointment. Uh, can I switch my in-person to telehealth? So, we, we want to keep that and offer that to those who, who want Of course, absolutely. That's incredible. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. So this entire uh, uh, sort of space, uh -huh. that, um, offices, counseling. These are really are incredible rooms. I love these doors. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're nice. And then, um, yeah, this is uh, another another space uh, for that. So, okay. um, these are you know, director of uh, behavioral health is, is here. Um, like, you know, like Jim said, it's a, it's a nice space, comfortable where people can come. Absolutely. And um, see their doctor, regardless of income, from the richest to the poor. Absolutely. So, you know, with Mary Post and many other places, you know, we think that healthcare needs to be provided to all regardless of income, regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of gender identity, race, the political affiliation. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to do about healthcare. Here for everybody. Absolutely. Amazing. All right. All right. And so see this, uh, excuse me for a moment. Okay, of course. Oh, there's more. There's, there's more. more. There's more. These are uh, what the pediatricians are. Oh, okay. We use a pass system where the doctor is embedded with their his staff or her staff. Okay. So that can exchange information quickly. That's so cool. That's great. It's called a pass system. So I think we have the different setup there. Yeah. Nice. 
it seems a very efficient, but yet efficient. yeah, efficient but not cold. Yeah. So, and some of the medical systems work out of this space, of and then this will be various spaces. We're still working that up. Working that up. It's uh, mostly for our pediatric stuff. It's so incredible. Very spacious. Uh, it's been a a long time coming. This building is you know 20 years old, so it needed needed to change a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is it's it's. An incredible use of the space. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go to the conference room. Okay. That. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, more. Well, and I've got to say, I've got to admit that considering when you look at this space from the outside, it doesn't look this big. But once you're in here, it's like, I, that's why I said this is an incredible yeah. use of the space. It's very, very, it feels yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh, our conference room. Uh, we okay. use it for various purposes, education of our staff, uh, meetings uh, for staff and providers. I like the horseshoe. Yeah. Some of our board uh, meetings are held here. Uh, we're able to provide uh, space not just for in-person meetings, but also we have equipment to conduct virtual meetings. We have a screen, we have a camera. And, uh, and very nice so looking projector, projector right there. Yeah, so it's a pretty- Movie theater quality. <laughs> it is movie theater quality. So, so esta es una conferencia nos permite hacer juntas virtuales. Se usa para educación de nuestro personal, los doctores y, y la mesa directiva. Uh, so es, un, es un espacio que se utiliza mucho. Okay, so, when, you know, going on back to the expansion of Mariposa and community outreach, we're reaching the entire community. How many buildings does Mariposa have throughout the community now? I know it's a lot. I mean, we've, we've been through to three, I think, ribbon cuttings just in the last month. I think we occupy 14 buildings. Wow. We occupy 14. And how many of those offer care? Um, we have a number of buildings just for administration. Of course, the first bank, Puma, is yeah. all administrative offices. We, we have administration. We have the uh, computer system staff, human resources, uh, accounting, and all of that. But most of the other spaces, we, we do provide clinical care. We have a couple of buildings that we provide clinical care, but it's only for um, a specialist, like the former unit source building. Yes. So yes. IMS, independent medical specialist, we use that building to bring specialists to the community who have uh, uh, nephrology or kidney and vascular at the moment. Okay. We have plans to bring other, other specialists, but we occupy uh, 14. Obviously, uh, six are, are known clinics. We have our family health center in Patagonia, our tuba clinic, uh, our Rio Rico office, and then of course we have um, three sites in Nogales, which we call it the main or the main campus. We have the Mariposa Nogales North, which you yeah, visited. we were there. Yeah. Of course, tuba as well, and then we have the Mariposa Nogales West, which is the location by by the hospital. So okay. The idea is to provide as much as many services as we can locally yes, um, reach everybody yeah it, it does take uh, time and effort to to bring those local um, yeah we have to compete of course with Tucson and Phoenix but we think we have a really good place to live Santa Cruz County is special beautiful place to work and live and we want to promote that and our hope is that Doctors, nurse practitioner, physician assistants can choose to work and live locally. So thanks to all of you that can help us promote that idea. Of course. All right. So does that wrap up the tour? I think so. Okay. Uh, thank you for Joe. And, no, thank you and so Tiger much for giving for, and taking the time to give us for, this. For um, allowing me to do this. It's always an honor to address the community. I hope this is helpful and we'll see you soon. No, for sure. Absolutely. You heard it from, straight from Dr. Pereira himself. Um, care is available for everybody, uh, and Mariposa is ready to provide it.